terms of compounds that more specifically mediate concentration and focus, we have to go back to that arrow metaphor model that we talked about at the beginning of the episode that included epinephrine, adrenaline, acetylcholine, which acts as this attentional spotlight. In fact, acetylcholine and elevated levels of acetylcholine have been shown over and over again through beautiful work from Mike Merzenich's lab at UCSF and the Kilgard lab down in Houston and a number of other labs, including Norm Weinberger's lab at UC Irvine again and again to improve or even directly gate neural plasticity by increasing focus directly. That's a lot of word soup, but basically what happens is if acetylcholine transmission is increased even transiently within the brain, there's a greater opportunity for neuroplasticity to take place. And the reason there's a greater opportunity for neuroplasticity, aka learning to take place, is by way of the increased focus that spiking acetylcholine can provide. As I mentioned earlier, there are a number of different foods which contain choline. You can look those up online. Choline acting as an amino acid precursor to acetylcholine. But of course, there are compounds, there are supplements that can further and more acutely increase acetylcholine. And indeed, I use these myself. The most effective one I've found is alpha GPC. Alpha GPC consumed at dosages of 300 milligrams to 600 milligrams prior to a work bout or prior to a workout greatly increase one's ability to focus and concentrate. At least that's been my experience. And there are some good data in humans. So how would I use alpha GPC? I would use alpha GPC by taking it about 10 to 20 minutes prior to any time I want to focus or concentrate very deeply. I've taken as much as 600 milligrams at one time, although I find that 300 milligrams is enough for me and I tend to be quite sensitive to supplements and caffeine in general. So I'll sometimes take it alongside yerba mate or with yerba mate and or with coffee prior to a workout or prior to a bout of work in which I'm focusing on mental work. Uh, so it could be reading, writing, could be math, could be data analysis, could be anything where I need a lot of focus and concentration. Now, a number of people have contacted me about a recent study suggesting that alpha GPC when taken chronically over many years could increase one's vulnerability to stroke. I've looked at those data and my read of the data that they're not very conclusive. Although anytime you see something like that, you know, a study that's pointing to the fact that a given compound might increase the propensity for stroke, you obviously want to be concerned. So we have to ask ourselves how, by what mechanism that is, could alpha GPC be increasing the susceptibility to stroke? And it seems to be related to increases in TMAO, which is a marker related to the cardiovascular system. And one known way to offset increases in TMAO that are associated either with alpha GPC or increases due to other things, so ingestion of particular food compounds actually can increase TMAO, is to offset that by taking 600 milligrams of garlic. Now, I've been taking alpha GPC pretty consistently for a number of years. I do not take it every day. I would say I take it about four days per week, again, prior to workouts or bouts of cognitive work. I have not seen my TMAO spike and I've evaluated that by way of blood tests. But nonetheless, I take 600 milligrams of garlic in capsule form anytime I eat anyway, and I do that for general cardiovascular function, and there's some interesting data on immune system function, et cetera, for garlic. So I've been consuming 600 milligram capsules of garlic for some period of time. Some days I'll ingest just one 600 milligram capsule, other times I'll take two. But based on this recent study and the concerns about TMAO, I make it a point to always ingest a 600 milligram capsule of garlic anytime I take alpha GPC, which again for me is about for me is about four days per week. So in our model of attention and focus, you can now clearly see why taking alpha GPC, which increases acetylcholine transmission, would be beneficial for concentration and focus, and why taking it with a double espresso or why taking it with yerba mate would further increase concentration and focus because as I mentioned earlier, Caffeine is going to increase epinephrine. It's also going to increase the density of dopamine receptors and the alpha GPC is going to increase acetylcholine, this spotlighting for cognition, this ability to really amplify the activity of specific neural networks, which is largely what's happening when you're trying to focus and pay attention to something specifically. So if one wants to increase the amount of dopamine transmission in the brain and body for sake of increasing concentration and focus, one of the most efficient ways to do that is by ingestion of the amino acid L-tyrosine. 
Again, L-tyrosine can be derived from food sources. I invite you to look up those various food sources on the web. Simply go to a web browser and put in foods that contain a lot of L-tyrosine and you'll get a rich array of choices to select from. But in my case, I use L-tyrosine in capsule form. I will take 500 milligrams of L-tyrosine, 300 milligrams of alpha-GPZ and a cup of coffee. I'm careful to do this early in the day, certainly not after two or 3 p.m. because I don't wanna diminish my ability to fall and stay asleep that night. Do this early in the day before a workout or before a bout of concentrated mental work. Again, I tend to do this about four days per week, so certainly not every time I sit down to do work. And I should also mention that I still tend to do the behavioral tools. I'll tend to use five minutes of binaural beats or binaural beats throughout the work session, sometimes do an ice bath or a cold shower before. I don't want to give the impression that I combine every tool that I've talked about today for a given work bout. I mean, that would be pretty wild too. Take a cold shower, pop an L-tyrosine, take an alpha GPC, drink two espresso, listen to binaural beats. That to me seems like a very inefficient way to go about life. In fact, I make it a point to try and use tools to increase my ability to concentrate and focus but not to combine more than two or three of them at any one time. And when I say two or three, what I mean is I will use supplements like alpha GPC, L-tyrosine and caffeine together before certain work bouts. I might use the visual practice of focusing on a given location for a minute before I begin that work bout. I might combine those. Then another time I might take a cold shower prior to doing some work. Other days, I confess, I've slept very well or my enthusiasm about what I'm about to work on is such that I don't require any of these tools. Again, there's no requirement, there's no pressure to use any of these tools, behavioral supplement based or otherwise. It's simply a matter of using the tools that are going to allow you to achieve the states you want to achieve and to improve your ability to go into those states without any help at all. And this is what I find particularly attractive about supplements. It's not so much that they put you into the ideal state for that work, and then you accomplish that work and then you always rely on those supplements.